Hello and welcome to Model Train Fund. Today we're going to look at uh, what is uh, uh, model train automation and how do you actually do that. Um, model train automation is actually a very complex topic um, and uh, is not necessarily the easiest for beginners. Uh, however, I will try to see if I can, over a series of videos, uh, make a more simple explanation. In this, the first video, I'm going to look a little about um, the concepts uh, of train automation and what you need to think about to get uh, going with the train automation. Uh, the ultimate goal is to be able to make something that's uh, more automatic, uh, like this uh, layout I have here in uh, front of me, where you can see the trains running around uh, automatically. Ultimately, I would say you, there's uh, three types of uh, train automation. Uh, you can talk about a fully automated layout, where the layout basically is doing everything uh, by itself, where you would see uh, the trains running around uh, fully automatic. Then you can uh, talk about uh, assisted uh, automation. Uh, if you have the assisted automation, the basic idea is that uh, sometimes uh, the, uh, the layout will take over by itself and automate certain processes, while you can do things uh, manually. Uh, this could be, for example, uh, like this layout here, where in essence, if you look at where the trains are, this is actually uh, intended to be a shadow station. Uh, the idea is that when the trains come out on this part of the oval, that would be uh, uh, the entire layout, I would be able to manually control them while they're driving out here on the layout when I'm tired of a train, I can drive it into the shadow station. When I drive it into the shadow station, uh, the automation will take over and then will dispatch a new train. Um, in this case, it actually randomly chooses a train. And as you just saw, the train that just came in was dispatched and sent out again. Now, hopefully we will see another train coming out uh, when this one comes in. And here you see it actually changed it. So with automation, um, you, you're also able to uh, mix such that you can drive manually while you've got automatic trains. Uh, what's the benefit of that? Well, if you're only one person, it can be uh, difficult to manage an entire layout and it's more interesting if other trains are driving around as well. Um, and then you can also use the automation to basically automate the more boring parts. Let's say go in and park the train on a shadow station while you're doing something more interesting on the layout, let's say driving it into a station or doing the shifting in the train uh, yard. I hope you will enjoy the video. So uh, let's start by looking at uh, what do we need uh, in order to uh, do a model uh, train automation. Well, first of all, you need the uh, locomotives. Uh, the locomotives must be digital so they can be automatically uh, controlled. Uh, you need uh, signals as well. They also need to be uh, digital. And then, of course, your turnouts and accessories uh, needs to be digital. Um, well, maybe here I should say I have seen people do automation uh, on analog layouts as well. However, it's not uh, quite as simple. Uh, in this series, I will look at how to do model train automation where everything is digital. And um, in order to uh, control our digital locomotive signals and accessories, uh, we need a control station. Uh, the control station will connect to all of these and then control the layout. However, one of the biggest challenges uh, with train automation is to figure out where is the train actually on the layout. Uh, so in order to uh, figure that out, we need some uh, sensors. Uh, so we need a way to detect where is uh, the train uh, on the layout. Uh, there are many uh, different techniques uh, for this. Um, I will actually, uh, in this series, uh, mostly look at uh, the uh, S88 train detection using uh, contact tracks. Now, when we have the uh, control station it's, and it's connected uh, to the sensors, then it will know where the trains are and then it can actually uh, control the locomotives and actually uh, control the locomotives according to the signals on your uh, digital layout. However, 
you must also tell the uh, control station uh, how you want the layout to operate and function. So you need some sort of programming. Now, if we're talking about the uh, central station tree, the programming is actually events. So it's based on events. So basically, typically what happens is that a sensor detect that a train arrived somewhere, let's say at platform one at your main station, then uh, the control station would know that. It would know that it has to uh, stop the locomotive uh, at uh, platform one and do that. In the same fashion, when the uh, control station wants to, um, to have the train depart uh, from platform one, it will have to first set the uh, turnout such that it will actually uh, come from platform one out to the main track. And then it will have to set the signal to green such that the locomotives actually can run. Now you could uh, choose to use your central station tree uh, for the train automation, but you could also use uh, software on your computer. However, if you use software on your computer, your computer cannot directly uh, connect uh, to your layout. It basically does not understand the uh, digital uh, commands of your layout and, and the uh, locomotives, signals and turnout. So in order to connect uh, your computer and use the software, train automation software, you actually need to have a control station here. So here I've illustrated you can use the central station tree, and indeed you can. But there's also many other options, because in essence, the central station tree is a very advanced uh, control station. The uh, PC, or let's say the software, really only needs something so it can send commands to the uh, layout. So what are the differences between using your central station tree and using a software for, for the train automation? Well, first of all, uh, what the central station uh, tree actually can do is really a simple train movement and control. Uh, if you go over on the software side, you will see uh, that most uh, automation softwares actually uh, support very advanced uh, train movements uh, and control including switching in the freight yard, uh, routes, uh, schedules, uh, schedules that uh, vary depending on day and night, uh, randomization of your trains, and so on. So on the software side, there's a much uh, richer feature set. Um, if you look at uh, how the uh, central station uh, tree uh, works or how you do uh, train automation, um, often uh, the uh, smart signals are used to provide safety. How do they provide safety, the smart signals? Well, remember when we had the signal series, the smart signals could actually have implement a stop section as well, such that it could power off uh, a certain section of the track, such that when the locomotive comes, it will actually automatically stop there. Um, as another option, you can actually use an M84 to achieve the same thing uh, with dumb signals. Um, but there are also other ways if you're looking for it. Um, on the uh, other hand, if you look at the software side, well, everything is actually tracked by the computer and the software. So in truth, you don't really need signals. Um, the signals are really only there to make it look prototypical and look real on the layout. So it's basically just for your enjoyment to see that something turns from red to green. In truth, the software does not need it. So if you're using a software uh, train automation, you can actually uh, do with just uh, dumb signals and you do not have to invest in the more expensive uh, smart signals. Um, Another interesting difference is uh, the central station true, um, sorry, the central station tree truly doesn't understand where the train is. It will uh, understand that there's something on the track uh, through the sensors. And now sensors come in, in various uh, flavors, uh, but uh, true for pretty much all of the sensors is they can just detect there's a train on a certain set of the track. They don't know which train it is um, and, and so on. It, it just knows there's something on the track. If you're using uh, software instead, software will actually keep uh, track of uh, the trains. 
It will keep track of the locomotive. So if it's driving from one block to another, it will know it did that. It will actually keep an exact tracking of the trains. For example, you would be able to uh, understand uh, such things as there's a freight train, uh, that's train number 320. It has a locomotive, which is uh, class 232, and it has eight coal cars. Uh, the uh, software might even know that the length uh, of the total consist is, uh, as an example, 118 uh, centimeters. It knows what the max speed is um, and so on. And you even have uh, some software that will actually uh, vary the acceleration and deceleration uh, of the train and the train movement uh, depending on how heavy the train is, whether or not it's loaded or not. Um, the difference here from the central station tree is that most software will actually uh, calculate where the train is. Um, where the central station tree really only understands simple train movement and sensors. Um, that, for example, means that when you want to implement a block using the central station tree, Typically, you need more than one sensor in a block. Remember from our train series, a block is our basic uh, concept for making sure that trains do not collide. We protect a block with the signals. We have one signal uh, protecting the block. So if you go into the block, uh, you can only go in if there's no other train there. And in order to go to the next block, you also need to have a signal protecting it. In blocks, you could uh, imagine that a train comes in and stops. Uh, this could be in the front of a train station, at the entry to a train station, or let's say when we arrive at the platform one at the train station. In the case where you arrive at platform one, you would like the train to actually break and then stop at a certain uh, place. For the central station to do that, it needs at least two sensors. One sensor, such that when the train arrives at that point in the track, it will understand now I need to start braking. And then another sensor for here I need to stop, hence set the speed to zero. If you're talking about a bi-directional uh, track, then you would need a stop in each end. Now the uh, software, Depending on what software it is, uh, they may need the same amount of sensors or they can even do with just one sensor per block. Uh, and how does the software achieve that? Well, that's because you have to calibrate your locomotives uh, to the software or uh, rather the software has to understand the locomotive. It has to understand how fast is it driving at a certain speed, how fast does it brake, how fast does it accelerate. Uh, and based on that, it will actually be able to calculate from it hits the block till it actually uh, needs to stop, how long does a certain speed need to be on the train. So the software can be very accurate and it can actually uh, even have different stopping points for one block as well. So as you can hear, the software is a much more uh, advanced way of uh, doing the train automation, while the uh, CS3 or the central station tree would do what I would call more uh, simple uh, automation. So uh, let's uh, look at the little example I have uh, here on the table uh, right now. As I said before, this is a test of uh, automatic uh, uh, shadow station where you see the trains coming in and being dispatched uh, out on the layout. So what am I using to actually achieve this? Well, I have the uh, central station tree. I have that one over here. Um, I got uh, digital locomotives. I got digital signals and I got digital turnouts as well such that the uh, central station can uh, actually uh, control everything and actually direct the uh, trains to the uh, correct track. In addition to that, I have over here, so the white box over here is uh, actually the uh, train detection uh, and that will actually detect where the train is. You see a bunch of wires going in and then they go out to different points here on the oval where I can detect where it is 
but it also goes here to the tree tracks in the tra shadow station to detect when it actually needs to uh, stop. So if we look at the uh, central station tree, you can see the train is running around now, and you can see here on the central station tree, each contact becomes yellow as the train actually uh, runs uh, around the, um, the oval and the loop, and it, that is the way that the central station tree is actually tracking it. So the Ludmilla is taking another loop here. You see now it's the first one, the second one here, and now the uh, C C6 contact, and now the uh, one just before the shadow station is lit up, and now it will run in. And when it hits uh, the one here uh, at the shadow station, it will actually trigger another train. So now you see that the uh, steam train is actually uh, driving out on the track and you can see that it's actually a, a little longer train. So when you see here, when the front of the locomotive hits C6, it will light up, but it will also uh, keep being lit up till uh, the entire train has passed. And now we see the Ludmilla happily going again. You can also see here on the central station tree, I put some extra lights down here in the right hand corner that will actually light up. They will actually show you which uh, track is chosen uh, when the uh, train comes in. So now it will uh, select again here, it selects uh, track one uh, as a random track. Um, and I guess my randomizer like uh, selecting the same uh, track uh, over and over again. Uh, maybe that's something I need to look into. So let's see what it selects this time. You see it turns yellow. It actually selected the same one again. All right. You can also do some interaction here. If you see over here uh, at the uh, uh, two turnouts going out of the Saturn station, you see it says SH1 release. That is green. If I turn that one off like this, you will actually see that all the trains will uh, pause. And now it will actually, even though it has selected here, you see in the bottom uh, right hand corner, it has selected uh, track three, it will actually not continue. I could make it continue by hitting the release button one more time. And then you will see now it will actually start up again. So this is an example of doing a uh, train automation. Um, it looks fully automated. But in truth, the idea here is that the, um, when the train comes out on the layout, I can control it. If you notice, the speed is the same. The central station tree is actually not controlling the speed. Then you can say, how is uh, the locomotives actually stopping here? Well, that's because I'm losing the uh, stop section uh, of the signals. So they basically power off. So whenever the uh, locomotive comes to a certain track or to the stop section, it will act, aut actually automatically stop. So let's see if it uh, will stop this one here. I believe the, the stop section is, well, actually up here. So you see the locomotive comes in, there's no power, then it stops. It has selected another one, it keeps going. You will see the signal change here after the train leaves. So, um, Train automation is an advanced uh, topic um, and I really uh, will um, encourage some caution before you uh, jump into it. Uh, however, during uh, this series of uh, train automation, I will try and make it uh, as uh, simple as possible and make uh, some easy examples that hopefully uh, everybody uh, can use. Um, and at the same time, I will say, well, don't despair. Uh, don't uh, be frightened of it. It's a lot of fun to do uh, train automation um, and it's very rewarding to see your trains uh, drive around uh, by themselves. Um, so, in, in honesty, uh, train automation uh, uh, requires a lot of patience uh, to desi design the automation, uh, to create the automation, uh, to put the wiring in place. You saw the mess of wires I had on the table. That's a temporary layout. You need to make sure to do it much more structured and organized. Um, so it, it's an extra complexity. It also means that uh, troubleshooting uh, can become uh, very interesting. 
Uh, there's lots of things that can uh, go wrong when you're doing train automation. And uh, I would say in the beginning, you really need to keep an eye on it to make sure that don't, uh, trains don't uh, accidentally uh, crash or hit each other. Um, one very important factor with uh, train automation, and you really need to focus on that, is reliability. Tracks need to be very reliable so the trains never derail. I use the uh, Macklin C-Track. Um, that means you basically got uh, tracks made for digital, uh, made for automation, very reliable tracks. Uh, so I, I don't see any uh, problems there with the tracks. If you're using other types of tracks uh, or, or you're using uh, flex tracks, it becomes an entirely different matter. You need to have absolutely clean wheels and clean tracks. Uh, why is that? Because you must make sure that every time uh, the automation tells the uh, locomotive to do something uh, or the turnouts and so on, that uh, they actually get the uh, commands. So the turnouts and signals must be very reliable. They must work every time. If a uh, turnout sometimes works, you can easily get in trouble because maybe the turnout didn't shift the train to the right platform, so it hits another train that's there and so on. Uh, the signals need to be very reliable, especially if you're using the stop section feature as the safety to make sure that the train doesn't drive into another block, for example. Uh, in the same uh, fashion, the train detection using the sensors must uh, work every time. Uh, if you, uh, if the uh, central station tree or the software doesn't know where the uh, where the uh, train is, uh, then uh, then everything uh, can go wrong. Uh, some of the train detection, uh, for example, when you use uh, the uh, contract tracks, uh, actually uh, requires the wheels to be clean as well. Uh, however, it has also uh, different advantages. So as a tip, I would encourage you to uh, at least uh, avoid, uh, let's say, uh, things that can go wrong from the electrical side. So soldier, solder every wire, solder every connection, make sure they're secure, make sure that the uh, cabling is correct, uh, and so on. And then I would say you have to test, 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 and test again, because what you think uh, might work uh, may actually not work in all cases. Uh, so it could be that uh, maybe you made some train automation uh, that worked well for short trains but doesn't work well for long trains uh, and so on. So you really need to think about it. Or maybe you have a locomotive that just brakes a lot slower than other locomotives. So it actually might run through a safety section or something like that. So you need to be uh, absolutely sure that everything works. So test, 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 and test again. Uh, the train detection, well, in truth, uh, the control station, whether this is the central station tree or a PC with software, only really knows uh, what, uh, uh, that a train is detected uh, at a certain spot in the track or a certain section of the track, but it doesn't know which uh, train it is. There are some methods that can uh, do this, but they're common, uh, not common and typically not used. If examples of things that can go wrong with train detection is, what if the train didn't make it entirely into a block? Maybe it, it stopped too early. Then the end of the train is out in a turnout. Uh, maybe the uh, control station doesn't know that. Uh, that means when another train comes, it will hit it. Uh, a control station cannot detect if the train has stalled, if it has derailed, if a turnout didn't work and it made a wrong turn, and so on. So there's many, many things to, uh, to think about, which comes back to the topic of reliability. That's why reliability is so important. So uh, if we look at the uh, shadow station here, what are the examples of uh, something I had to think about uh, because it could go wrong? Well, uh, first of all, I had to make sure that the uh, turnouts 
uh, on either side of the shadow station so the turnouts here and the turnouts over here they will not turn when a train is actually on the track um, so I had to make sure that no train will be on the turnout while uh, something uh, triggered the change uh, of the turnouts. Um, I also needed uh, to coordinate the trains, right? As an example, you don't want two trains leaving the shadow station at the same time because then they will uh, collide. Um, I also needed to make sure that when a train comes into a track like the Ludmilla here in front of you, it is actually completely within the track and not sticking out. So I have to make sure that the sensors are placed such that the train will be fully within there. And then, of course, I will have a certain maximum length uh, of my trains as well. So I need to think about that. Uh, as the final thing, whenever a train is coming in, like you see my uh, small version of the uh, beer train, Danish beer train is coming in here. It needs to actually come into an empty track and not come into a track that is already occupied, uh, which could be occupied by the steam here or by the Ludmilla. So these are all things you have to think about. Now for this uh, shadow station, I did it pretty simple. I'm basically making it such that there's three trains and only one uh, leaving. So whenever one train comes in, you see it triggers another train. It's random which train uh, it triggers. None of the other trains are going out at the same time. It patiently waits till, or they patiently wait till uh, the uh, locomotive comes around. So in this case, the steam train, what you will see when it hits this track, it will trigger another locomotive that will drive and you see it goes out here. Um, I have also experimented a little with where is the uh, sensor for the train detection. In this case, on the Ludmilla track, it's way up here. So it's not actually till the Ludmilla hits the stop section that I detect it's within. Uh, for the steam train, it actually starts detecting here. So already when the train is approaching, it will release uh, another train. Uh, but these are all things you need to think about when you're doing automation. And this is why it becomes um, an advanced topic. And this is why you need to test and test and test again. You, uh, when I did this, I did uh, many mistakes uh, and had to uh, rethink and redo uh, things in order to do it uh, in the correct way. All right. So uh, that was a little about the concept uh, about uh, train automation. Now there's uh, many uh, choices you can do. Uh, you have to decide what kind of uh, electronics are you using uh, for the turnouts, for the signals and so on. Uh, what kind of uh, control station uh, are you gonna use? Uh, what kind of uh, detection method? So there's many detection methods from a read contacts to circuit tracks to contact tracks uh, to infrared uh, and so on. Uh, so there's many choices uh, you can make there. So in truth, it's, uh, it's a really, really uh, big area. So uh, in this series of uh, train automation, uh, what I will focus on is, uh, first I will focus on the uh, central station tree as the control station. Later on, I, will, uh, I intend to move into uh, using a, a software as well to show how uh, to do that. I'm going to use uh, the uh, Macklin uh, decoders and turnouts and signals and so on. Um, and then I'm going to use a contact track for detecting uh, where, the, where the train is uh, on the track as well. And uh, in order to uh, detect uh, with the contact track, I'm going to use the uh, S88. Um, so uh, in the uh, next videos, I will start by uh, looking at how do you make a contact track out of a normal track? What do you need to think about? Um, and then in a following video, I will look at the uh, S88 and the Link88. How do I connect that uh, to the central station tree so I actually can detect where the trains are? And then the following videos will be more advanced topics about how 
uh, I control the trains, how I make routes, uh, and so on. So I uh, hope you, you liked this video. Uh, if you did, uh, please hit the uh, like button. Um, don't forget uh, to put any uh, questions or comments or tips and tricks uh, you have in the uh, comment section uh, below. Uh, also, uh, if you like uh, this channel, please do subscribe to the channel. Uh, and then I hope I see you again in the next video. Enjoy!